Oh, hi. It's uh, Deborah Luderbeck with Reuters Television in Washington. I'm checking if you can hear me. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed your name. Oh, uh, my name is uh, Deborah Luderbeck, and I'm with uh, Reuters TV in Washington. Okay, great. Thanks, Deborah. Okay, great. Um, so, c can you hear me all right? Uh, you're, yeah, I get you. Okay, great. Um, let's just start off with uh, your name and title. I'm, uh, my name is uh, Brigadier General Chris Wycross, and I'm the Deputy uh, DCOS Communication here in Kabul for ISAF headquarters. All right. Um, let's just start off in a very general way. H how would you describe the security conditions in Afghanistan right now? Well, I can tell you, Deborah, that uh, right now in Afghanistan, uh, we're showing some real progress uh, all through the country, actually, whether it's um, in certain villages where some of the elders are willing to uh, stand up against the insurgents by themselves or whether it's a tremendous progress from the ANSF forces uh, in partnering with ISAF. We're just seeing some real progress all over the place. There's certainly a sense in the United States that, you know, casualties are, are on the rise, that the, the fight is extremely tough. What are the challenges that, that the foreign military forces are, are facing in Afghanistan right now? Well, I can tell you with the insurgents, uh, as it stands, we're putting a lot of pressure on them, whether it's I, uh, ANSF or the ISAF coalition forces. We're putting a lot of pressure on them in their comfort zones, where they're from, in their backyards, and that's causing them to, to come out of the woodwork and sort of uh, fight a lot harder than they have in the past. You look at places like Marja, where we have cleaned out the Taliban, uh, and then we're going into places like Kandahar, and they just don't want to give up those strongholds, so they're fighting back hard. Um, in, in terms of Marja, where is that? What is the situation like there now? Marja is in Helmand province. Uh, it's in uh, RC Southwest. Uh, the situation is they did a uh, their coin strategy uh, in the spring of this year, and as they went through, provide security so that the government and development uh, agencies could come in behind them uh, and it's interesting to note that even General Petraeus noted just a couple days ago that when he was in Marja last week he was able to walk downtown now that wasn't possible the five and six months ago I mean in Marja today people are registering for the vote that wasn't possible in the past so I mean there's just such tremendous progress in Marja and it's a real testament to the coin strategy um, in, talk to us about about what the situation is with with the vote when is the vote? Who's up for election? And uh, how are you helping the country prepare for that election? Sure. The election's on the 18th of September, and it's not one election like it was last year. We're talking about provincial elections, so there are 34 distinct elections across the country of Afghanistan. Uh, the list, logistically, that's, uh, that's quite a big change. Uh, but I can say that the government of Afghanistan, uh, in, in help with the uh, with UNAMA, but and and more specifically with the IEC, the uh, Independent Election uh, Commission, uh, they worked very hard to make um, to make it possible to open up the right polling stations and to get all of the uh, all of the paperwork and all the logistics in place uh, to get the these 34 uh, distinct elections in place. ISAF, of course, the coalition forces are in support. It is an ANSF-led. Uh, security operation for all of these polling stations. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, how dangerous is it for somebody to vote in Afghanistan? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Oh, uh, how, how dangerous is it for somebody to vote in Afghanistan? Well, I know you that uh, the security, um, the security protocols that have been put in place. Are, uh, are, are very stringent. The ANSF have done some great work in the planning uh, of the security uh, and with ISAF in support, should something happen, uh, things, uh, things are looking good. I mean, I can tell you that lately there has been some insurgent attacks on, uh, uh, on people, on uh, candidates, on uh, uh, polling areas. Um, this was to be expected. The, the, uh, uh, the uh, insurgents are not happy about the elections. Uh, they're not happy that the, the people of Afghanistan have a right to vote for a democratic society. 
So, uh, but anyways, the security, the security plans that are in place, they should, certainly should meet all the needs. Um, what is about the level of confidence uh, people in Afghanistan have about their government? Certainly there were a lot of questions uh, about the previous election. Uh, what is your sense about the sentiment of the population at this point? Well, I can tell you that the IEC, the Independent Election Commission, has done a tremendous job uh, getting ready for this, for this elections, for these elections, for fair elections, for open elections, for honest elections. Uh, and I think the people of Afghanistan are very, uh, are very pleased with that. And, and I think that um, as we go through, we're going to see an increase in number of voters. And, and, and let's be honest, every vote, every cast vote in these elections is a vote against the Taliban, is a vote against the insurgents. Um, how, how big a test is will this election be for the coin strategy? If you know what you ultimately are trying to do is to help the population feel more secure, I'm sure that their security would reflect uh, some of their thoughts about about their government. How, how big a test of the coin strategy is this election? It's another step in the progress. Uh, the coin strategy requires uh, security in areas so that the governance, so that the administration, so that the, the development agencies can all come in in a safe environment uh, to build trust for the Afghan people and of their government, of the government of Afghanistan. This is all a phased approach. They're in different stages all through this, pro all through this country, uh, some regions more so than others. Uh, but I think, generally speaking, uh, allowing the people of Afghanistan their democratic right to vote in a fair and free election uh, with, uh, with security measures that are in place, this is a real step forward. Well, what are you expecting the, the challenges to be in Helmand and in Kandahar uh, for, for these elections? Well, we expect um, surgeons, I mean, they've stepped up already some of the, um, uh, some of the attacks that they're doing, um, but we have a great uh, intelligence agency that's working. We're working very hard with the ANSF. Uh, we're continuing on the planning. Uh, I mean, th things are progressing a lot better than in the past. Um, what about turnout, um, the expectations uh, with turnout in the elections? Um, you know, what percentage of the population managed to vote the last time? Uh, to what degree do you uh, measure turnout uh, and, uh, in these elections? Actually, I, I don't have the answers to that, but I can certainly give you the historical figures for the past. Um, we'll make sure that gets to you, but I don't have the answers to that. And quite frankly, I, I can't even venture to guess uh, right now without uh, speaking maybe to the, maybe somebody from UNAM or IEC have a better indication. Okay. Just um, in terms of the elections, uh, again, overall, if, if you are a citizen in Afghanistan, what risk do you take by going to vote? Well, I think the people of Afghanistan um, generally like the idea of their democratic right to vote. Uh, and if they go to the polling stations, the ANSF are there, the police, the army, uh, coalition forces in support. Uh, I mean, the plans are there to uh, create a safe environment for them to vote. Okay. Um, I also understand that uh, the U.S. Defense Secretary has recently uh, uh, arrived in Afghanistan. Uh, what is your sense about, about what his objective is? Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> okay. I really have no idea. I, uh, that's a little bit above my pay grade, sorry. Okay. Um, just again overall. Uh, Earlier this year, I believe it was in, in February, going back to March, uh, there was the idea we, we have a government in a box. This is going to be done quickly. It's going to set a precedent for, for future campaigns. Why, why does it seem to have taken so long in March? And, and can you say at this point that that campaign is, is mostly complete? I got all but that last sentence, sorry. Oh, I mean, can you say at this point that that campaign in Marja is, has been completed or, or, or still a work in progress? Well, I would say that the certainly the security has improved drastically in that area. The governance and development is, uh, I mean, these are, these are processes that we have to take carefully uh, in, in, in a, um, um, in a uh, structured, structured way. 
Um, so Marja is is certainly uh, has uh, has uh, has come out of it way ahead. Uh, the progress is steady, uh, and we're learning uh, continually learning about the coin strategy and and how we go forward. And in working and cooperating with the government of Afghanistan and in the uh, provincial and the district governors, uh, we're we're making some tremendous inroads.